Okay, let's set up our menu and winning mechanics. In the sprites, I have Sprite Enter, which just says press Enter. It is 192 by 32, and the origin point is centered, although this doesn't really matter. It might be different for you. Then I've got a Sprite Message, and this one, the dimensions do matter. I've got it 96 by 32, origin point is centered, and the three sub-images say ready, clear, and game over. And so depending on whether we are at the beginning of a stage, we've won or we've lost, the message inside will change. I've also created a new background, BG title, for the title screen. I have created some new objects. Object Enter uses the sprite enter and object message which uses the sprite message but it has a depth of negative 10 because I want it to appear above other objects in the game and then I've created a few new rooms a room title which uses the background that I have created as well as the object enter placed inside of it and then I've also created a room level 2 and this is just a simplified version of the first, but it's important to keep the ghost house and the starting position for the player in the same place. And I've only put in a few of these pills to make it very easy. It does not have that object scorekeeper in it, and you'll notice I also don't have an object player in it. That is because I'm going to use the message object to create the player and the ghost at the beginning of the level. So what we do need in here is that object message. So let's come to the object, and with the object message selected, we'll just put it in right underneath the ghost house, and reopen level one. I've already removed the player, who would be right here, but I will put in the object message. So close that. So now let's add some events and actions to those objects. We'll start with the object enter. This is going to be just like it always is, add event, keyboard enter, and we'll come over to main one, and tell it to go to next room. So close that. Before we get started with the object message, I want to create a few new variables. So open the object control, and in the create event, come to control and set a new variable. This variable will be global dot game over and set that to false. I'm going to create another one underneath it called global dot can underscore move and set that to false as well. At the beginning of the game we want there to be a little bit of a pause so that the player can orientate themselves, get a quick view of what the maze looks like, and then we'll allow the player and the ghosts to start moving. So that's all we need with this object and now we can open the object message. We need to determine which of those three sprite messages it's going to show as soon as it's created. That will be based on whether or not the game is over, and if the game is over, have we won or have we lost. So let's add an event, create, and we'll come over to control, test variable. We're going to test for global dot game over being equal to true. Drag in some blocks and now we need to see whether we have won or lost. So I'm going to set in a comment here and this will hold the message clear which will indicate that this code is for changing the message to the clear message. Remember that comments aren't actually code they're just for us to see and understand what's going on. So let's see if we've eaten all the pills in the room. We'll come over to Test Instance Count, select the Object Pill. This will also apply to the Power Pills because the pill is the parent of the Power Pills. But instead of being equal to zero, we want this to be equal to one. That's because we're going to have the message appear in all of this trigger once the last pill on screen is being eaten but has not yet been destroyed. You'll see how this works a little bit later. So we need to drag some more blocks underneath that. And the first thing we need to do is change our sprite. So main one, change sprite. We'll change it into sprite message with a sub image of one. 
speed of zero. If we've cleared the room, we move on to the next level, but I want it to give it a little bit of time before doing so. So we're going to use an alarm here. Come to main two, set alarm. We will set alarm zero to 60, so two seconds. Let's go ahead and set up that alarm. Add event, alarm, alarm zero. I'm gonna leave myself a comment. And what this alarm is going to do is it's going to check and see if there is another room after this one and go to it. But if there isn't, it'll go back to the title screen. So I'm going to leave a comment saying that this is checking next room. In previous tutorials, I showed you how to check and see if we were on the last room by setting up a level counter. But that's actually not necessary. If we come over to main one, down in our rooms tab, we can actually test to see if there is another room with this check next. So if there is another room, I'm going to come to control, drag some blocks in. We will set variable global dot game over to false. And then in the main one tab, we will go next room. If there isn't another room though, we need to go back to the title. So come to control, say else, bring in some blocks. And the first thing we need to do is destroy the object control so that our lives and score don't show up on the title screen. So come to main one, destroy instance. We'll set that to destroy object control. And then we'll come to our rooms, select different room, and set that to the title screen. Let's come back to our create. And now we'll set up the actions for if we've lost the game. So I'll come to control, I will give myself another comment. This will be game over. I want to come to score, check lives. I'm going to see if lives are equal to zero. And I'll come back to control and drag some blocks underneath it. And so if this is the case, we need to come to main one, change sprite. We'll change into the sprite message with the sub image of two, which is the game over sprite and give it a speed of zero. Again, I want to wait a little bit before we head back to the title screen, so I'm going to set an alarm. This alarm will be alarm 1 to 60 steps. We'll create that by add event alarm alarm 1. And I'm going to leave a comment saying that this is for going to the menu. So before we go back, we need to destroy the control object, so main 1, destroy instance, destroy object control, and then we'll go to different room, our title room. Let's come back to the create event. So now that we've set it up for when the game is over, we need to set it up for when it's not. So underneath all of this, we'll come to control, say else, leave myself a comment, and this is when it's going to say ready. I'll go ahead and drag some blocks around it. And so we need to change the sprite to the first sprite. So main one, change sprite, give it the message sprite, sub image zero, speed of zero. This is where we're going to have it create the player as well as the ghosts. We'll just have it work on the player for right now. So create instance, create object player at 320, 512. Those positions might be different for you, so you'll have to figure out where that is in your game. And then I want to give us a little bit of time when the game starts. So main two, set alarm. This will be alarm two, 60 steps. Let's add event, alarm, alarm two. And this is where we're going to allow the other objects to begin moving. So come to control, I'm gonna leave myself a comment. This is where we will activate moving. So I'm going to set variable, global dot can underscore move let's be set to true and then I want to destroy the message and get it off screen so main one destroy instance destroy self you can see how this can quickly get confusing so that is why I am adding in these comments so that I can see at a glance what everything is going to be doing so we can close this object and now we need to deal with the player so let's come and open the object player and the first thing we need to do is actually restrict the movement of the player because right now the can move variable is having no effect. First we'll come to our left event and come to control and at the very top we'll drag a test variable 
that variable will be global dot can underscore move being equal to true. So now it will only move if can move is true and it's aligned to the grid. So let's just copy this first action, come to the up event, paste it at the top, come to the right action, paste it at the top, and the down, paste it at the top. And that should prevent us from moving for two seconds before the game actually begins. But now we actually have to bring the message on screen when we've won or lost. Since we have no ghosts right now, we can't test the losing condition, but we can test the winning condition. So let's come to our object pill, collision, and down below our setting score actions. This is where we are going to test for this being the final pill that we are eating. So I'm going to bring in a comment. This will be test last pill. I'm going to come to test instance count, drag it underneath. This is going to be our object pill equal to 1 because this will be the last pill on screen. So close that. Drag in some blocks underneath it. So we need to prevent the objects on screen from moving and make sure game over is set to true. So set a variable. We'll set global dot game over equal to true. Set another one. Global dot can underscore move equal to false. There is a chance that a cherry has been left on screen. So let's just clean that up and get it off in case there is one. Let's test instance count. Test for object cherry being larger than zero. If there is, we will have it destroy. So destroy the object cherry. And then finally, we need to create the object message. So create instance, create object message at 320, 384. Again, that positioning might be a little bit different for you. We also have to put this inside of the object power pill, so go ahead and select all of this code, copy it, come to the object power pill, and above the final destroy instance, paste it in. We can leave it exactly as is, so let's go ahead and test the game. Okay, so I can hit enter. Go to the first room, I can't move until that ready moves off the screen. So now I will go ahead and clear the room. Okay, and just to prove that the power pill can be the last pill that we eat, I've left it on screen, I've also left a cherry on screen. So I eat it, I can't move anymore. And after a few seconds we move on to the next level. Just quickly eat these ones, and this should take me back to the title screen because it will know that there is not a room after this one. So it's clear, wait a few seconds, and here we are. So we can win the game. Now we're ready to get into our ghosts.